Hi everyone, uh, I'm Yasmin Fehmi. Welcome back to NJPAC's 10 Newer Creators Instagram Live series. Um, today we are joined by Laikwa Nuna Yawar, um, and I'm going to bring him into the room right now. Uh, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Here we go. Laikwa is a Newark muralist, artist, and educator. And he's coming in right now. Hi, Hello. good to be with you. Same, hi. Great to have you, you here. Um, so you are the third in our 10 Newark Creators series. Um, and we're very excited uh, to have you because you're such a really prolific Newark artist um, and you have such a large body of work. Um, so I think that's actually where I want to start um, is talk to us for, for folks who are tuning in and aren't familiar with your work. Talk to us about what you do and how you got into it and sort of your journey um, coming from Ecuador to Newark. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, Internet. Um, <laughs> uh, nice and rainy here from Newark. Um, that's a loaded question and there's a lot to that. But um, I think I'll start with my name, which is like Kwanuna Yawar. And that's um, my sort of like inventive name. Um, when I look at my trajectory now, I see that this name was a way for me to sort of create a persona that could create art and could um, kind of like face the world. Um, it was also me dealing with my immigrant trauma and just like, dealing with learning English in the US and all those things. So I created this name and this person, um, you know, my legal name is Lenny Correa. I come from Ecuador. And through this name, I've been making artwork um, based on um, creating representation in public space, making murals, um, making paintings. Um, and I find myself focusing more on storytelling. Like I realized that what I've been doing is sort of like tell and retell my story and the story of other people like myself. Um, and I'm just using this uh, forms of art making that were familiar to me. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm trying to do now is sort of find different ways of communicating the same messages. Um, but my original love was just painting, which is what I think a lot of people have seen um, of my work. It's all these big as murals all over the place. Um, and I enjoy that process a lot because it takes me out and it puts me in front of people and it kind of recreates the process of being new to a place, which I think was sort of embedded and like become part of myself. Um, when I migrated to the US, I like looked at everything with the eyes of wonder and when I'm working in different communities that are not my own I kind of bring that same perspective and I'm able to to like integrate myself that way but also maybe deal with my own like again migrant trajectory and reality it's um it's been wonderful I'm really blessed to be in a city that's accepted it so well and I'm happy to be here <laughs> so so you mentioned the city could you talk yes. to me about what you think Newark offers artists that really maybe is not available anywhere else and what kind of community they can find here yeah I think that's it it's the community um so I started making sort of art in public space when I was living in South Korea and I was teaching English uh, for a little bit and then I traveled to like Europe and Asia. And I lived in New York for a little while. Um, but there was something about being in New Jersey, um, being outside of the center of the world, like, you know, New York City is where everybody goes to just like be part of this larger conversation. But I think there's something very interesting that happens on the periphery. Um, I grew up in New Jersey, I arrived to the Bronx and I then came to Newark. I mean, came to West New York, New Jersey. And my identity is kind of attached to that otherness of New Jersey. 
Um, and then on top of that, I'm an immigrant. So there's like these layers of otherness that get, that get combined to create like this thing that I'm doing, which is my life as an artist. And I find that super, super engaging. And I find a lot of that in Newark is sort of this idea of independence because, you know, Newark is near New York City. Um, it benefits from New York City, but it's far enough that it can have its own identity um, and it can tell its own story. Maybe Jersey City doesn't get to do that as much, right? Um, mm. Or like West New York, it's too close. Um, but Newark does. And when I came to Newark the first time, when I was a freshman in college, I kind of felt that. And then just through time, I kept getting to another community here, friends. And that's really what I love. It's that even if it's unspoken, like everybody knows that sort of like fire and that struggle and like that um, attitude that I really love it. <laughs> it's just, I, I kind of don't see it in a lot of places, but you kind of feel the, the familiarity. Um, for example, if I go to the Bronx, I can feel, it feels like where I grew up in West New York, where if I go to like the Iron Band, it feels a little bit like that. Um, I don't know if there's like shared DNA that I find super powerful and strong in Newark. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's been, I've been here for around seven years and it's been a lot of changes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there there was a big change earlier this year. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, could could you talk to me about when you thought, okay, I think things are changing, and maybe my creative practice will look different. Maybe I'll work with less people around. Maybe it'll be more, you know, tight windows. Because I know I think you're working on a mural series for Paul Robeson galleries at Express Newark and you're working in these kind of like s small windows with not a lot of people around and <clears throat> these very mm -hmm. different circumstances, I, I guess, from what you usually yeah. do. What was your thinking as that happened? Yeah, at the beginning it was just panic. Like, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I think we were all, we all find ourselves in that place. Um, and you know, as we digested everything, something else started to happen and for me and for the people around me was like this idea of continuing the work or for me personally was the sort of like what art has always done for me, which is kind of like save me or always be that answer and that, um, that place where I question things. So it was a form of maybe taking myself out of my own insecurities or not knowing what was gonna happen, it was just what I've always done, which is like get to work. Um, and what was beautiful about that is that, you know, we are in a community that does that. Um, I was able to have a conversation with um, friends and see that the Newark Museum was doing stuff like the ICC, the Urban um, Community Corp. And everybody was just sort of galvanized by the problems that were happening. And I love that mm -hmm. sort of drive. Um, and then beyond that, it just became like the issue of staying safe and helping us all stay safe. So as an artist working in public space, now I have to ask myself, like, how do you do this? Um, how do I engage without actually being able to be close to someone? How do I, like, ask people what they want to see in a mural if, you know, we're not as free to get together? Mm -hmm. So I'm still trying to figure that out. And the projects that I'm working on, I'm sort of like, questioning that problem um and at the same time it was sort of a time for a shift and a pivot um i am very lucky to have had a project that i was working on at the time that was completely digital which was which is uh, a virtual reality experience so i used up all this time to basically learn new programs and like how to make this happen. So it was a little mix of all of that. Um, and I think going forward, I'm just thinking about how to be engaged in the moment, um, how to not lose what I know, which is making murals and engaging with people and then push forward to whatever exciting unknowns we we're in. Exciting unknowns. I like that. <laughs> yes. Um, 
So, so um, let's talk then about this three, three part mural series for Paul mm -hmm. Robeson Galleries. I think this is your latest project. Um, aside from the VR mm -hmm. you mentioned, you saw, I saw you posted a little bit of that to your stories and I was very curious. I don't know if you wanna share anything <clears throat> about VR before we move on. Um, yeah. If, I mean, if there's something you've learned. Uh, yeah, what was it? If there's anything you've learned as you go through that process of learning, because VR obviously is like a very different yeah. medium. Uh, yeah. And it, and it kind of affords you, I mean, you're, yeah, you're moving in a different, it's more like sculpture, I guess, if you're, as opposed to paint. Yeah, it's kind of everything. I found it super interesting because it's, you know, I used to think that architecture was the meta uh, medium because it like dealt with um, space and how you move through it and color and like dictating how you feel. But <clears throat> I think digital and um, basically video games or digital space, it's kind of has been the latest medium, like art medium um, and the most radical really. Um, I think we all knew this. I knew this when I like played Super, uh, Super Mario Brothers the first time, um, like back in Ecuador. Um, but it's this sort of idea of putting you in the place of the narrative, in the place of a character, and mm -hmm. allowing you to have um, agency of action, which is what I find super interesting about VR. So as a form of storytelling, it's like, you know, you can put agency back into the hands of the, the viewer, so they're no longer passive, like watching a movie or reading a book. Um, but they can interact. So that's been super beautiful. And also, I find it wonderful because I get to collaborate with people. Um, yeah, through Zoom or like, one to one, but also get to work with musicians or engineers. Um, people do photographs and it's been super, super interesting. Um, I'm going to be actually debuting that during the New York Arts Festival coming up in two weeks. Oh, great, okay. Yeah, so I'll share that online. Um, I need to finish setting up a sign up list so people can come to the studio and actually experience it. Um, we'll be releasing a video to sort of go through what this is and what it looks like. Because it's also kind of a new medium, so it's, I think a lot of people don't grasp what it is or what it could do, so I'm excited for that. Um, and at the same time, I'm sort of like challenging the idea of what it is for me to make murals and also like bring it into that digital realm. Um, for example, the Paul Robinson murals have been very interesting because they allowed me to spend all this time like sort of thinking about the process. And yes, I'm like just by myself painting there, um, which is like, you know, artists will tell you is what they do in the studio if they're painters. Um, you spend a lot of time with yourself, but to think about this sort of like large message board that is a mural and to think about how we can, like it might not do the same thing as it did before, which is reach, uh, I mean, reach a large audience, um, mm -hmm. the new sort of frontier and the new street and a new digital street is whatever we do online and that can reach more people. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just like briefly get into that project though, um, I was invited to sort of make three murals on Robertson. Um, it's been a project that's been in the making for maybe like eight months, even more. Oh, wow. um, yeah, because of, you know, the original amount of time it takes me to design something to like starting the first one, the second one, yeah, it must be like a year because I remember installing a piece like last December, um, the first one of three murals, one at um, the Campus Center and two mm -hmm. at uh, Express Newark. And they all sort of look at the life of Paul Robertson. And I was trying to, you know, show the complexity of a person through three different, um, murals and just looking at three aspects of his life like him as a as a performer and him as a, as a radical thinker and him as just a human um so each mural kind of tackles that and you know COVID happened so 
I was able to finish the second one last March, right at the beginning of the shutdowns. And I just finished, finished the last one. And I'm excited for people to see it maybe someday. <laughs> Once prison work opens again. To see it in person. Yeah. 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 I saw, I saw a glimpse of it, um, what you shared. And um, it had this really beautiful quote. I think this is from a radio broadcast. You can correct me if I'm wrong for me. It is. Yeah. From 1937, um, where he said, every artist, every scientist, every writer must decide now where he stands. He has no alternative. There is no standing above the conflict on Olympian Heights. There are no impartial observers. And I love that quote. You actually like painted it right onto the mural. Yeah. So why do you think that excerpt is really relevant now? Um, and what, what moved you to put, to give it such prominence on the mural? Um, I think it's going to be relevant until the US as a country can actually look at its history and question it. Um, you know, not only being um, born out of genocide and slavery, like we have not really dealt with it. Um, that quote was Robertson talking about his feelings when he was uh, visiting Russia and he's kind of like called to arms, right? And unfortunately that's still the case today like we're still fighting the same battles like we're still dealing with colonial uh, patriarchal racism um, and unfortunately we're gonna have to like keep doing that until something changes but I think we need to question history and sort of like start there um, in order to like bring the change for ourselves first and then the country in large so yeah I think the idea is for this mural to be there for a long time. And I think his voice and this quote um, should do that as well. Like should bring us back to that moment and reminds us why we're fighting. Mm -hmm. um, to, to jump back to kind of your work, um, who are some of your go-to collaborators in the Newark area or in the New Jersey region? Um, and what kind of projects have you collaborated on? I think you mentioned the VR is a collaborative project. When you do painting or digital painting or anything like that, is that also collaborative or can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been interesting because I feel like as I evolve as an artist. Um, the one thing that doesn't change is my curiosity and like me to sort of ask questions of myself and what I'm doing um, and then use that as a drive. So throughout that trajectory, I've been super lucky to meet tons of different artists and ha now I can see that there's periods of my life but I collaborated with a lot of different friends and and that I'm no longer there and that we're no longer making that for example like when I was making illegal street art on the streets like I'm no longer doing that um, but what I find beautiful about Newark is that there's like no shortage of amazing people to collaborate with um, I think I like coming back to institutions and different uh, organizations to continue collaborating. Um, and again, that sort of seems to have its own like trajectory as well. Um, yeah, it's like a constant change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to talk about collaborating <laughs> now because it feels um, harder than ever, I guess. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of just Zoom calls. Um, and with this whole, like my recent project, I've just been having to expand outside of that circle as well. Um, for example, uh, one of my collaborators is an engineer and 
like I don't know anything about engineering. <laughs> I don't know how to code, but that's what collaboration um, brings, right? Like you can expand your way of seeing the world. So I really, really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, are there any projects that, I guess these murals that you were doing for Paul Robeson galleries overlapped with the pandemic. Is there anything else that you had to put on hold or that you have on the back burner that you're sort of like letting, you know, percolate in the back of your mind? Are there projects that you haven't quite pulled the trigger on, but you want to, you know, explore? Um, yeah, it's like an interesting workplace because like right before the pandemic, I was in Equad, um, making murals um, that are part of this virtual reality project. Um, and it was interesting to sort of think about how far that could take me, like the, the VR making and mixing it with mural making. And I'm not sure where that's going. Um, but I find it super interesting. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot the second half. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> it, was a, it was a big question. It was, you know, are there any projects beyond what you've talked about that you've sort of had in the back of your mind that you're like, so, I'm gonna get to that eventually. It's a continuation of that. Like, um, I keep questioning, like, what does a mural do? Like, it actually, yeah, transmits a message but when I'm making a mural, I end up, I end up making, I mean, doing a lot, of, a lot of research, like maybe meeting a lot of different people, collecting photographs, like collecting all this interviews, narratives, and then that doesn't go anywhere. So I've been thinking about how to create this sort of archive for a mural or expand the idea of the mural. Mm -hmm. um, I did a project with uh, Philadelphia Mural Arts and a collaborator, um, Ricardo Cabret as an artist and a, as a, an artist and a coder. And we made a mural there and we also had a website. Um, so the mural has a QR code that you can scan and it takes you to the website. And on that website, you can see um, our other collaborators, which were students that um, helped us design the mural. And you can see their work, like their artwork and their coding, because we had uh, workshops on coding. So you could see how that mural was made. Um, and that sort of, I think, tells the larger narrative or like the larger story of the mural. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking about how to expand that. This um, virtual reality idea is kind of the next step. And I'm still sort of in the back of my head thinking about where that could take me. Um, I'm not sure, maybe animation, but yeah, it's, it's just like a fun place to be in. I'm also kind of, I'm like Virgo, so sometimes I'm good at organizing things, but then when it comes to making creative stuff, I sometimes don't know what's next. And that, I think like that, I, that reason of questioning is what drives me as opposed to like what the end result will be. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like you have a lot of curiosity for a lot of different mediums and um, different narratives. It's it's always challenging to be a, a visual artist that is oriented toward narrative because visual art is sort of necessarily like static. Um, have you considered like doing a comic book or writing or something like an illustrated book or? A I, like not because I, I think I'm horrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done narrative. Um, but then I think maybe as visual artists, like we are, I mean, we are using a language, which is a visual language. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it's just like my hangups as well, because English is like my second language. Um, maybe it's part of like that distance that was created, um, when I became bilingual, um, like this distance in my brain, like I'm trying to learn a third language, language Kichwa right now. Mm -hmm. um so it has a lot to deal with language and maybe my like not feeling confident about speaking english in this country kind of made me stay away from using language as a medium interesting 
So then I feel like I'm always practicing that um, and that the visual is always like a place, a safe place that I go back to. So the challenging thing is to write. Uh, the challenging thing is to create narrative. Um, it's to like sort of confront my voice. Um, and so far it's been healing and it's been helpful for me to do it in collaboration with others. Mm -hmm. um, because I used to think that my narrative or like my story didn't really matter. That's why I made people's for, I mean, murals for other people. That's why I made murals that spoke about, you know, different issues that communities might have, um, but not about myself or my own story. So now I'm trying to sort of like deal with that by inserting myself into it. And I think that's how I'm gonna get to the narrative, like by finding and defining my voice. And then maybe one day I'll be able to make a manga or a zine <laughs> or a comic book. Maybe I would right. so love that. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. Um, yeah. So we're actually, I can't believe we're quite close to the end. Um, but I guess uh, if you did have one message for, for folks who are watching, and there's quite a few now, um, what would you want to impart to them, um, either about creativity or mm -hmm. kind of keeping on in this time? Um, yeah. what, whatever you feel is in your heart. Um, yeah, we need to abolish ice. <laughs> um, I was going to use a different word, but I think this is a public medium. Um, that, and also the fact that can't forget that we're at a time of radical change. Um, it's, a uh, it's upheaval. Um, I keep reading articles about the U S be in decline and I see a lot of that but it's sovereign and it's um, interesting for me to think about those times of change as being up to us to make better or for it to go worse um, and I like that agency I like to think that we can all come together and push for a better tomorrow um, even if things seem horrible today and I think as artists as storytellers as whatever you do, whatever you are, um, it's up to you as well. And it's up to all of us to sort of create that future with what we do. So keep on going. Beautifully put. Um, and I think that's a great note to end on. So I'll ask you, um, what do you have coming up or coming out? Uh, aside from the murals you've talked about, what should we be looking out for? You mentioned the VR project um, as a part of the Newark Arts Festival. Yes. Uh, where can people go to see that? Um, the Newark Arts Festival website will have all the events. Um, I would be putting up a sign-up list there for the VR experience. Um, I'm also having a show in the Bronx at Casita Maria. It's a series of paintings of my family. Um, and that's opening the same day, October 8th, as the Newark Arts Festival. And uh, I think that's it. Oh, oh, yes, that's something else. Also, I'm working with Monument Lab um, on this soon to be released video. Um, so I'll be releasing that online. Everything's online, like really just like, let's stay on Instagram and I'll keep you up to date. <laughs> cool. Well, we're on Instagram now, so you guys know uh, where to follow. Um, thank you so much for your time. It was really wonderful chatting. And um, yeah, I hope uh, we can connect again soon. Have a, have a wonderful night. Good night, everyone. Peace. Good night, everybody. <laughs> uh, so that's it for the third in the 10 Newark Creators interview series. Um, follow us here on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook to stay on top of everything NJ Pack. Um, and we'll see you next week for an interview with Diana Candelejo, um, another Newark artist. Um, have a wonderful evening, um, and we'll see you soon. Bye.